வணக்கம் இது உங்க லேமன் துவேஸ் ஜல்லிக்கட்டு ஃபார் த பாஸ்ட் ஃபியூ டேஸ் திஸ் ஒன் வேர்ட் ஹஸ் பீன் த டாக் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு லாக்ஸ் அண்ட் லாக்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ப்ரோட்டஸ்டிங் டு லிவ் த பேன் ஆன் ஜல்லிக்கட்டு த ப்ரோட்டஸ்ட் இஸ் கேட்டிங் ஸ்ட்ராங் டே பை டே பட் ஒய் ஃப்ரம் அ காமன் மேன்ஸ் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ ஜல்லிக்கட்டு இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் கன்சிடர் அஸ் அ கல்ச்சுரல் ஹெரிட்டேஜ் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு பட் இட் இஸ் சம்திங் மோர் தன் தட் தே டோன்ட் ஈவன் நோ வாட் இஸ் ஜல்லிக்கட்டு ஹவு இட் இஸ் ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் வாட் ஆர் த ரூல்ஸ் அண்ட் ரெகுலேஷன் ஆஃப் இட் ஓகே லெட் மீ டெல் யூ ஃப்ரம் த பிகினிங் ஃபர்ஸ்ட்லி த மோஸ்ட் மிஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் ஃபேக்ட் இஸ் தட் ஜல்லிக்கட்டு இஸ் அ தமிழ் ட்ரெடிஷன் இட் இஸ் டோட்லி ராங் ஜல்லிக்கட்டு ஹஸ் பீன் இன் பிராக்டிஸ் சின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் இண்டஸ் வேலி சிவிலைசேஷன் த்ரீ தௌசண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஹண்ட்ரட் இயர்ஸ் அகோ தேர் ஆர் ராக் பெயிண்டிங்ஸ் அண்ட் டெல்லி நேஷனல் மியூசியம் டு ப்ரூவ் திஸ் just because of only people of tamil nadu follow that culture till now it is considered a tamil culture bull tamming is a part of india's history please note the term bull tamming it's not bull fighting the meaning of the word tamming is to domesticate lord krishna has tamed seven bulls to marry nappinai the important thing to be noted is the considered birthplace of lord krishna is in uttar pradesh so this point is enough to take jalikattu as india's culture i guess now what is jalikattu it is done in three ways manjuvarattu vattam manjuvarattu velivarattu in manjuvarattu the bull comes out of an entrance called vaadi vasal Once it comes out the players will catch hold of its hump they have to catch hold of the hump and travel with the bull to a specific distance in velivirattu the players have to tame a cow in an open ground patta manjuvirattu is same as velivirattu but the only difference is the cow is tied with a 15 meter length rope not all breeds of bulls are used in jalikattu only six breeds are used in here one of the breed is alambadi which is almost in extinction with respect to few specifications bulls are selected for jalikattu by its birth itself to make their legs stronger they are given swimming practice once in a week other than this no other special training things are given to them the bulls participating in jellykattu are not used for any domestic works they are totally free jellykattu is our culture it's not an entertainment it is a government that has projected jellykattu as an entertainment in order to develop the tourism industry who the fuck is this peta where the hell do they come from they filed a case to ban jellykattu in 2004 as a result in 2014 supreme court banned jellykattu peta has claimed that the bulls are being tortured they are being intoxicated with alcohol to get arrogant if peta is fighting for the welfare of the cattle why don't they ban beef trade in india they will not because in india beef trade is a 10000 crore industry do they even know what is jellykattu and its rules the players are supposed to tame the bull only by holding its hump if they try to catch neck horns or the tail they are disqualified another rule is that only one player is supposed to tame the bull at a time the second person is disqualified a proper health checkup is done to both players and the bulls before they enter the field this checkup is done by a team of government veterinary doctors in front of the district collector so by this point it is not possible to intoxicate the cow the whole event happens in presence of animal welfare board you could have heard people getting injured by this sport but not even a single bull it is a part of a same culture that even if a single bull gets injured the whole event will be cancelled whole event is videographed and it is submitted to the government after the amendment of jalikattu act in 2000 9 the event is conducted still more organizedly till now we had been seeing the reasons for ban from now on let's see why jellykattu should not be banned before there were 130 breeds of cows in india now there are only 30 before there were 10 lakh kangame breed cows now we have only 15000 of them for the male female ratio was 1 is to 4 now it is 1 is to 8 just to increase the milk production they have started to import jersey cows into india just because to increase the milk secretion in our native cows they have started to inject our native cows with sperms of foreign bulls through artificial insemination in other parts of india the count of native breeds is drastically reducing it is not happening in tamil nadu just because of chellikattu do you know how bad badly our rural economy will get affected when we lose all our native breed cows 68% of india's total milk production is from small farmers they work in association with milk cooperative societies in their area there are more than 1 lakh milk cooperative societies in india with almost 1 crore and 10 lakh members in it if all our native breeds are replaced with western hybrid jersey cows then all farmers will lose their life support and stand helpless because these jersey cows are easily born to disease they have to be kept in a stabilized atmosphere our farmers cannot afford that one more problem is that the jersey cow drink water four times more than our native breeds with the present water scarcity existing in india it is practically very hard for the farmers to maintain them because of all these difficulties and affordability issues the indian dairy industry will slowly get into the hands of multinational companies now that is where the problem begins once they get into the dairy industry the cost of dairy products will be decided by them there are two reasons why these mnc's are trying to get into indian dairy industry in india more than rice wheat and sugar dairy industry is economically bigger even today there are about 500 million vegetarians in india dairy products are the biggest source of protein for them why should peta target india alone bull fights actually happen in spain a bull is let into a open ground and it will be hooked with multiple swords in its shoulder they will finally die on the field one more culture in spain is that 
Tar is tied to the bull's horn and lit fire. The tar melts little by little and flows through the bull's face. Starting from the bull's eyes to the brain, the tar melts the whole face. Can you even imagine that? They believe that their fertility increases when they eat the flesh of tortured animals. Mexico's culture is no less to this. The bull is toxicated with alcohol. It is then tied to a boat and forcefully dragged across a river. Then little by little, they are beaten to death. In South Africa, breaking the bull's neck is a competition. In comparison with all these brutal traditions, Jellicate is so respectful. Instead of banning those brutal abusements of animals, why do PETA target Jellicate alone? That is for two reasons. One is to motivate crossbreeding by artificial insemination. And second thing is to increase Jersey cows in India. Before India's independence, Gujarat's Bhavnagar Maharajas gifted few gir breed cows to Brazil. That is, our native gir breed cows are given as a gift to Brazil. What has happened now is so pathetic. As the gir breed cows count has gone down so drastically, in February 2016, Gujarat's government has purchased gir bull sperms from Brazil at the cost of 50 lakh rupees. Can you just imagine? Brazil has concentrated and developed our cow breeds so well, but we are not doing that for our native breeds. Jellicut is the only reason why problems like these have not arised in Tamil Nadu yet. More than just a tradition, Jellicut is the way to save our native breeds. It needs a minimum of 500 rupees per day to maintain a Jellicut bull. But the whole farmer's family lives in money less than one-fourth of that. Our native gir breed cows in Brazil has been giving two to three times more milk than the same breed in our country. The supply of proper nutrition is the only difference that Brazil does. So if the government can focus on proper nutrition supply for our cows, they can do wonders. So talking about the health, the milk of our native breeds has A2 protein. It is very good for your kidney. It fights against obesity, joint pain, asthma, cholesterol and even few types of cancers. The milk of these hybrid and jersey cows are totally opposite to it. It has A1 type of protein in it. It has a slow poisoning chemical called casomorphine which is very injurious to health. It causes diabetes, mental disorders and many type of metabolic diseases. And worst thing is that all the packet milk that we consume is the milk of these hybrid cows. Where did these jersey cows come from? In the beginning, it was used in western countries only for beef. Even they don't drink its milk. But after projecting this as a business, they started to sell these cows to India to make money. Crossbreeding in India started in 1950s. In 1951, milk production raised from 17 million to 122 million litres. Could appear as big growth. But when seen with respect to 2 crore cows that our country had at that time, it is much lesser. At that time, National Dairy Development Board estimated that we will need 180 million litres more than the existing count to meet the demand after 10 years. This is when the problem of crossbreeding started in India. By seeing the size of Indian market, foreign dairy companies started to make contract with Indian state governments. The contract is for crossbreeding our native cows with their country breed. Initially, people didn't accept that. But the people who started to accept it were treated royally. They were given free foreign trips. Their children were given scholarships in western universities. By seeing these luxuries, others got attracted and started giving up their hold. 1962, Kerala amended a livestock act. According to it, no farmers can have a bull. If an agri inspector sees anyone having it, they will make it important. By this way, forcefully the crossbreeding was done in Kerala by artificial insemination. Slowly, this crossbreeding started to spread across the country. Today in Punjab, out of 1 lakh cows they have 80,000 are hybrid. At that time itself, National Dairy Development Board purchased 400 foreign breed cows. To know the result of crossbreeding, expert group was set in 1965 to analyze it. The result which that team gave is, because of this crossbreeding, the health benefits of our native cows is being destroyed and it can become dangerous to health to drink the milk of crossbreed cows. Even then, the government did not take it that seriously. Crossbreed cows lactate 4,500 litres of milk in one single breeding. But our native cows lactates only 2,500 litres. This is the main reason why many got attracted towards crossbreeding. But one more fact is that our native breeds lactates 12 times in its lifetime, but the crossbreed cows lactates only 4 times. When seen for a lifetime, our native breeds lactates 30,000 litres, but the crossbreed cows lactates only 18,000 litres. They did not consider this long time calculation at that time. The worst thing is that, in spite of many scientists and doctors advising to avoid crossbreeding, nothing changed. They were continuously giving warnings all the time. Even in India's 11th 5-year plan, they bought 40,000 doses of foreign bull sperms to India for artificial insemination. We are slowly killing our country's dairy industry. Delicata has been the biggest pillar to hold our native breeds. People who own bulls treat them like their children. It is enough of giving up. Let us save at least what we have right now. We should not be silent anymore. Ones who are protesting are not a part of any political parties. They are not going to get any awards for doing this. We are youngsters. We are literates. We will stand for our country.